Okay guys, I'm back for another video and in this video I'm going to be taking out this three prong receptacle also known as a outlet and I will be putting in this GFCI receptacle. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to test this outlet. We can see that there's power to it and we're going to do that before we turn the breaker off, just to play things safe, you can now see that there is power there. And we're going to come over here to the breaker box. And we're going to turn off the receptacle that is labeled bench. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to check it again. no power to it okay so now I'm confident although I will triple check with this once it is open I'm confident there's no power to it we're gonna go ahead and open it up And we're going to see what we have in here. I've actually never opened this up before, so I have no idea what we have here. Longer screw than I was expecting. The reason that I'm taking this outlet out and putting in the GFCI is because it's recommended that in garages or basements or basically anywhere that has high moisture and, and wetness uh, that you use a GFCI outlet also like uh, bathrooms and kitchens especially within a few feet from the sink in a kitchen or a bathroom but like i said we're going to check again so i'm using this tester to see if there's any power going to any of these these wires in here and it seems like there is no power going here so at this point, we've double checked it. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off this outlet. But before I do that, I'm just going to take a look down here to the wiring and see what exactly is going on. So it looks like over there at the breaker box, we have the wire coming out from right here and it's going down and it's going over to this outlet and then we have power going from here to the next outlet right there and then we have power going in there and then going to the next outlet which is right here and then it stops so for this reason I'm only going to install the GFCI outlet on this first one and yeah so let's let's do it. Now that I know where it's coming from and that these other two outlets are in the same line, let's go ahead and swap this thing out. Okay so
Okay, we have our old outlet out. And we wanna put in our new outlet. And one thing that I wanna point out is that in these newer GFCI models, um, in these newer GFCI outlets, they have the line on the top and the load on the bottom. So the load is basically under this yellow sticker. So what that means is that the power coming from the breaker box is going to go on the top line, assuming that you, you know, you put it with the ground on the bottom, which I do. I know that some people do it like this. A lot of the pictures of the receptacles online are upside down like this. But in any of my videos, if I'm talking about an outlet, I'm talking about it with the ground on the bottom. So since we have that out of the way, the bottom of the outlet is going to be the load and the top is going to be the line and the line goes to the breaker box or I guess vice versa, the breaker box comes here and then the load is going to go to these other two outlets over this way. That I, I want to see which one of these is the line and which one is the, the Romex going over to the other ones. And by the way, these are, this is 14 to uh, Romex. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate everything. I'm going to take off these uh, wire connectors. Now that I have it separated, what I'm going to do is I have one wire going to this side and one wire going to that side. Now I don't really need to do this because I can see that the Romex wire that's coming from the breaker box is this one right here. It, I can see it's going up and then it goes that way. And I can see that this Romex wire comes out of here and then feeds into the other receptacles. But even though I can see that, you sometimes can't see that and it's behind drywall. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the power on. Now that there's power back here, I'm gonna use my tester and I'm gonna check. Now, if I'm correct, this has power and this does not. So I'm going to check this side first. This should not have power. See, there's no power to here because this is no longer hooked up to the breaker box and goes that way. Now, this side will have power because it goes directly from here to the breaker box. So now that I know that this is hot and this has this wire has no power i'm going to come over here to the breaker box and turn it back off again and we're going to check again just to be safe so no power here no power here i'm going to go ahead and wire this into this gfci outlet now what we're going to do is we are going to Screw this a little bit. Now, gonna cap these up for a second since I'm not gonna be using these for a little while because I want to show you guys step by step okay so these I'm gonna put off to the side and these are the ones that I'm gonna be messing with so what I'm gonna do is use my screwdriver here and I'm going to loosen these up a little bit so that I can stick these wires into this. So black to brass, white to silver. So I'm going to take this white one and I'm going to stick it in here. But you can see that the wire is a little bit too long. I'm going to come here, 
I'm going to take off about this much. Let's see, that might have been a little bit too much. Let's see. That works. All we're doing is poking it straight down and then we're going to tighten it. actually going to use a pigtail for the ground. I just realized. Okay. If you guys would do anything different, feel free to drop it down in the comments. I would appreciate any feedback. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to Use one of these Wago 221s, the three compartments, and I'm gonna put that one in there. Okay, guys, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna use the pigtail. And it's going to go It's going to go from the Wago. We're going to use the pigtail just for the ground. It's going to go from the Wago. Okay, so we have our ground going over here. Do any of you guys uh, use electrical tape to seal up these Wagos? Let me know down below. Sometimes I feel kind of silly doing it, like I'm playing it overly safe, but I'm sometimes concerned that they'll pop open or something in the back of the box, or maybe when I push everything in back there, uh, it, it's you know it's kind of up like this or something, and then it just you know slips out. But let me know what you guys think. Okay, so now it's time to do the load side. Okay, we have the last wire here. Okay, I'm just making sure that everything is tight. Okay, so let's just recap here. What do we have? We have the Romex wire, the first wire that's coming from the breaker box and it's going in to the top which is the line that was not under the yellow sticker and we have the second Romex wire that is going to the other outlets coming into the bottom which is the load which was under 
the yellow sticker. And then we have um, we have the the ground wire coming in in a pigtail from the Wago 221 with three compartments into the ground spot under the green screw. And that's pretty much it. Okay, now we're going to close it up. There you go, guys. Out with the old, in with the new. Okay. We went from this to this. Now we're just going to turn the power on. And we are going to check. Reset. Looks like there's power. Correct. Correct. But we gotta see if that's coming over to these as well. And that's it. Don't forget to like and subscribe, comment down below, any requests or anything like that. Till next time.